All right, welcome everyone. Damon Green here with The Iconic Agent. Today we'll be talking all things real estate Facebook ads. And today I have a special guest with me. A gentleman I met uh, about three weeks ago at a marketing conference. Uh, I like to say not only do I teach this stuff, mentor and train myself, but I also go and I am mentored and go to trainings consistently. Met this awesome gentleman. Uh, Obi O'Carry, we had uh, dinner during one of the breakout sessions, we got to spark in the conversation, found out this guy has spent a whole lot of money on Facebook ads. So we chopped it up, Facebook marketing and, you know, marketing in general. So I wanted to bring him on as another Facebook ads expert to kind of answer questions. We've got a poll that we took. We're going to cover the poll questions for about the first 15 minutes, ask questions in the Facebook, on the Facebook page as they come, and we'll answer those afterwards. So, Obi, thank you for joining us, and just give us a little insight on folks that have never heard of you or don't know who you are and what you do. So, to everyone that's never heard of me or met me before, my name is Obi Okara, and I have been in digital marketing for the last five years with a specialty in Google and Facebook ads. Uh, to date, I've probably spent over $6 million on Facebook and e-commerce, real estate, um, all types of lead generation, uh, you name it. I've, done, I've probably done it. And so um, I'm happy today to be on this call. Thank you, Damon, for inviting me and love to share some insights that I've learned over the years of running Facebook ads, um, especially um, as it relates to marketing real estate listings and just things that I found work currently right now in the market. Awesome. Awesome. So let me see. I'm gonna make sure that, uh, let's see, we're here live. Make sure. That, okay. Let me, I got to post this link really quickly in the group on, on the Facebook. The years. Uh, let's see on the Facebook events page, just in case folks can't find it, then we'll go ahead and get started. Um, while I do that, so we took a poll in uh, one of the public free Facebook groups that I have uh, all around new construction marketing for real estate agents. And we sparked a conversation and ran a poll around the top five things that you, the audience, wanted. And the top three were follow-up and automation was number one. Number two was ad targeting and finding your ideal client. And of course, number three was ad copy and messaging. So, uh, Obi, I'm going to go ahead and paste this link over here real quick. So okay. as far as you, uh, your expertise, give us some insight on ways that real estate agents can use follow-up automation. Uh, and you know, however you interpret that follow-up automation, and I'll come back and kind of give you some advice because in the new construction marketing mastery program, mm -hmm. we've got a complete system set up with follow-up automation, but I know you, have spent a whole lot more money on Facebook ads than I have. So I definitely want to get your insight. So go ahead on that. I'm going to uh, go over here and take care of these folks in the group real quick and I'll be right back. Sure, sure. So one of the things that I've really found to be effective for follow-up automation on uh, Facebook ads are leveraging Facebook Messenger, uh, a face leveraging a Facebook Messenger ad. So basically what that looks like is, somebody clicks on an ad and then they, the response goes into Messenger and they get put into an automation where they have the opportunity to be uh, fielded some questions that allow the realtor to qualify that potential client. Uh, with a number of questions, for example, you know, what are you looking for, you know, um, uh, are you looking to buy or rent? Um, how much is your budget? Uh, all questions like that, that allow that realtor to qualify the prospect so that then after the automation is done, that realtor can then step in as a human um, within Facebook Messenger to contact that person uh, in Facebook Messenger or over the phone. So that, as far as I've seen, that's, that's probably the most innovative 
or the newest uh, innovation in the market right now, leveraging uh, Facebook Messenger to do that automation. Okay, and yeah, I totally don't know why, because I actually use the bots in my own marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, that's definitely something that folks will want to look out for. Um, now, one of the other things that I do that ties along with what Obi said, and you can combine the two together, but if you use tools um, such as Zapier, which is basically glue, I consider Zapier glue, it ties everything together. Yep. We use in the new construction marketing mastery training, we use Zapier, uh, call fire, slide broadcast, and then your choice, we use AWeber, but your choice of email autoresponder to instantly send text messages as soon as leads come in. After, so if you use a bot, you qualify them, then you instantly send the text message because you're 90% likely to lose that lead if you do not reach out in then five to 15 minutes. So 15 minutes on the high end. Uh, we also instantly send a voice broadcast to that lead. And then you'll also want to obviously send them an email as well. So that's the general follow up and automation. And as far as automation between the many chat bot, is that what you use, Obi? Yep, I love many chat. That's great. Okay. Yeah, between the many chat bot and Zapier, they all tie together. You can put all those together in a good package and really almost have yourself like an ISA when your leads come in. One of the biggest problems that I see agents talk about, number one, their follow-up's horrible. Um, no offense to you guys that aren't, but if you know your follow-up is horrible, these help, but you still need to follow up. And um, leveraging these tools will help you instantly follow up and when you have the response, every response you have should be, so when you send a text message, you send an email, each one of those, the whole goal of that communication should be to get a response. So a lot of agents say, hey, I get crap leads. These leads are no good. Um, they're just looky-loos. And yes, that is the case, but eventually they will probably convert. But if you don't have the tools in place and you're not trying to weed out those folks that are ready now, that's, you know, that's, you're not going to get the, as good a result. So for instance, the first email goes out and says, Hey, Mr. Lead, Mrs. Lead. Um, my name is Obi. I sent you some information on this project. Uh, when is a good time to talk? Now you're leaving the onus on them. So when we're talking about follow up and automation, you always want to follow up your auto, use your automation to follow up to get a response. And you, you want to leave me the heck alone, call me at five, I'll be ready next week. I'm just, but you want some response because those people that respond now, you can engage and start a conversation. Because although this is digital, it's not completely digital. Even a text message, follow back and forth. The text message will say, hey, I just sent you the information over. What's a good time to talk? That way they can respond back to you and you can start a conversation and then you work your magic as a real estate agent from there. Um, let me see if we have any questions on there. What tool do you prefer for Facebook Messenger automation? Nicole, we just uh, talked about that many chat. It's free or $10 a month yeah. unless you're doing insane amounts of traffic. Then I think it's a couple dollars more, but many chat is a really easy to use tool. It's literally drag and drop. Um, what else do you uh, use for automation or recommendations? Obi? Many chat, Zapier, th those are my two go-tos. And then any email, um, ESP, uh, email marketing tool that, that you prefer to use, therefore, after that. Um, those, are, those are my three main. Okay. All right, cool. Now, here's the one that everybody kind of falls over, and I add targeting. Now, I'll say first, and then I'm going to let you go, Obi, because I know you've got a lot more data behind this than I do. But when you're targeting ads, uh, there's actually, this isn't a question, but it's uh, something that came in. It talked about Facebook recently removed the likely to move behavior from their audience options, behaviors, demographics, um, what interests in all that work for buyers and sellers. Now, the first thing I'll tell you, which is what 90% of real estate agents don't do, you do not serve everyone or you serve no one. You have to determine who is your ideal client, literally, Take a pen and a paper and just write down who your ideal client is. That, when you know your ideal client, for instance, me in the real estate niche, you're on this live or you're rewatching this live because 
you were more than likely my ideal client. I found out how to reach you and I put a message in front of you that resonated. That's exactly what you need to do from a high level. So you need to know who your ideal client is. I talk to people on strategy calls, a couple dozen people a week. And who do you serve? I serve everyone, anybody. You, you can't have that. You can't do that. You have to serve a specific person. And when you determine who your ideal client is, you just find out where more of those people are. Everybody else really doesn't matter. Now, that probably doesn't answer the question as far as targeting specifically, but it actually ties in with the next discussion we're going to have. However, uh, Obi, go ahead and give oh, yeah. your, your take on that. All right. So targeting is a really interesting thing when it comes to Facebook ads on um, when you're marketing uh, new development or different listings. This is something that I learned while running actually an e-commerce campaign for a major sock brand. And during Black Friday, we spent a million dollars just on Black Friday and a million dollars on that Monday, Sunday, and that, that Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And the craziest thing was, which was counterintuitive to what I ever thought is to basically use your ad as your, uh, to use your ad as a weed out tool. So whoever you think your prospective client is, you um, put that into your ad copy. You could you take that into consideration as you put your ad copy together and you market to a specific zip code as a whole. And so that will be uh, everybody within that specific zip code, um, within your, the, your ideal ages that you're targeting, and you just let the campaign run. It's worked very well for me for some of the new development as, um, ad campaigns that I've ran, where I've seen leads that came in at a 5 to $10 cost per lead. And it's, it's really interesting because basically what that does is allows Facebook to do the work in terms of determining um, who to show your ad to, especially those who are already in market for, uh, for in market to move or in market to buy or in market to rent. And so it, it's, it, it I didn't understand it, but when I started to try it and test it out, it, it, it worked very well. Um, and something else that you can also A-B test against that, against that strategy is to leverage the detailed targeting box within your, at the ad set level. And let's say, for example, you know that your target customer they're interested in maybe entertainment or you have a uh, target customer that's more family oriented. If they're entertainment, then you would want to check that entertainment box within the detailed targeting area uh, at the asset level. Or if let's say you're targeting families, then you could target um, a, people who live in a single family home um, and you can geo target to zip codes that are near schools or uh, that have uh, shopping amenities nearby. Those are some other things that you can leverage to A-B test against just blasting out to everybody within a certain um, zip code. Um, I think- uh, okay, is, Let me, let me uh, stop you real quick and sure. ask you something. Sure, uh, sure. I know what it is, but just to be clear so they understand, what is A-B testing? So, okay, so A-B testing is basically, uh, taking two, two ideas, you have a hypothesis that this may work or that may work. And you can try both of them against the same audience to see whether or not, um, whether or not which one, which idea or hypothesis will, will be more effective. So you can do that with ads. You can take uh, two different ads and run it against the same target. So or, for instance, you could take yeah. like a, a video ad and an image ad and test those two against each other to see which one resonates best, has the lower cost per lead or the best uh, reactions, right? Yep, that's right. Or you can take the same ad and 
target it and run it to two different areas to see which area uh, resonates more with that one ad. And so that's A-B testing in a nutshell. Okay, cool. And yeah, and to, to, to add to that, and this actually ties in very close with the next, you know, ad copy. But as far as your ideal client, one area, if you're looking for high-end clients and 250,000 is not high-end, but that's kind of the start. And luxury is subjective depending on the market. But if you're looking for folks that have money and you're tired of looking lose, test out. It's not guaranteed to work in every market because every you can go from Tampa to Orlando and it can be completely different. Um, results. That's why you have to test, but try targeting within your targeting American Express because folks that like American Express are typically folks that have American Express cards. And if you have an American Express card, it means you have good credit. If you have good credit, it means you're probably able to buy a home. So that's a little small nugget to test out, but also ask yourself. And, you know, we have a, I have a questionnaire that I'm actually putting in the, um, uh, one of the trainings that I have, which is as far as your ideal client, ask yourself, what do they read? What types of publications, what types of books, what types of magazines, what types of websites do they visit? What kind of movies do they watch? What are their interests? Are they interested in golf? Are they interested in boating? Are they interested in race car driving? Are they interested in shopping? Uh, you want to get with your ideal client, kind of build those things out. You know, are they sending their kids to private schools? Is there a local private school that they'd send them to? Or, you know, there's so many things that you can dive into that'll help you get in the mind of your ideal client. And then you can use the audience insights tool, which I don't hear too many people talk about much anymore, but you can actually use the audience insights tool in Facebook, in your Facebook audience dashboard, type a few of those in and get some more interest as to what folks like. Now you can group your ads, your ad groups together and see, hey, let's see if this works. So, but the main thing you have to do the homework up front and you've got to know who your ideal client is. Um, you mentioned something, and this is kind of going to the next topic, uh, videos. What about, I'm sorry, go ahead. I have some other ideas to, um, to share. Right. Go with it, go with it. So another thing that's available within Facebook is being able to target um, how, by household income. And so you can uh, target a, a, a specific area, any by zip code, city or state. And within the detail, detail targeting um, box, if you type in income, you should be able to get the option that will show up for you to choose uh, people who have a, of, who, of people who have a, a certain household income. So you can, uh, target at the highest threshold or at the lower threshold and yeah, whatever they, you're looking to target. They do have those thresholds, but you got to be careful with real estate ads because sometimes you can get them through, but sometimes they'll tag you as being discriminate, being discriminatory. Ah, uh, that's right. So yeah. I've had ads go through and some not. So that's something you'll have to, you know, give a try to. Yeah. But that's where, because of, you know, they took those away these specific zip code pin dropping, you know, they're, they're not, they're a little funky there, but that's why knowing your ideal um, client and using other targeting strategies, things they like, things they read, TV stations, shows, news sites, American Express, things like that, you can really kind of hone in on, on that. Now there's also, if you look, if you check out Social Media Examiner and Ad Espresso, they have really good case studies and articles on uh, Facebook marketing. And also they have Facebook case studies where they have different audiences, but it's all about testing. There's no one size fits all. I've seen things work in California that don't work in Florida yeah. Yeah. or something works in Tampa that doesn't work in Miami. So you have to be the expert of your area. That's why it's important. There's no cookie cutter. Uh, you can't be lazy with it. There's no cookie cutter. You got to put the work in, but once you get something working, it's great. And the other thing, and I'm going to let you touch on this too, Obi. The key is you've got to keep running your ads because what you're doing, if anybody's a, a, a chef out there, anybody cooks, I love cooking because I love to eat. So cast iron skillet, you get your cast iron skillet. Like if you've got grandma's cast iron skillet, nothing's going to taste better than anything off of that cast iron skillet. Cause it's been seasoned those years of cooking and you know, the 
oils and the, the essence of the food that's been cooked on there dripped in. That's like your Facebook pixel. So the more you go, as long as you're targeting right, Facebook gets smarter and says, okay, we need more of these people. So the other thing is you have to run ads consistently. You can't spend $50 and think, oh, I didn't get any leads and shut it off. You're not going to see, you have to run, I'm not saying you have to run a million dollars like Obi, but you've got to run consistently and get something good going. And then it gets easier in time because you're literally seasoning that pixel. Um, and on the flip side, I know we talked a little earlier before we got on this call about, um, about, but kind of remarketing. So as far as targeting, what are your thoughts on video remarketing and the types of remarketing that are, that are able to use or you, you should start with if you have those resources? So in terms of remarketing, one of the things that I like to do is to remarket to those who visited either the landing page or clicked on the ad but didn't actually convert. And I'll create an audience um, with that for anyone who did that in the last seven days. And I would just run the same ad to them because sometimes people are in a hurry. They click on an, on an ad, they look at it, they say, oh, that looks nice. Um, I'm interested, but don't have the time to actually um, input their information or they might have gotten distracted, you know, whatever. So it's something prevented them from actually following through. And what I like to do is to remind them about their original intention because they did raise their hand and say, I'm interested because they went onto the website or clicked on the ad and I'll just show them the same ad again. It, it, you know, if you think about it, how many times have you seen a commercial the first time and you say, hmm, that's, a, that's an interesting commercial. And then you see that same commercial four or five times. Then you, by the fifth time, you're thinking, you know what, I, I think I might need that. You know, I, <laughs> and so it, there's nothing wrong with just showing the same ad again to the same person who is already showing that they're interested in, interested. Okay, and to tie into that, we do have a question. How do you use Facebook ads to target prospects who have visited specific Google ads, builder pages, and other locations effectively? Now, Nicole, I know you are in the new construction marketing mastery program. That is actually something we will be covering very soon. But basically, when you set up the Google ads or you have your own pages, just like you drop the Google pixel, you drop the Facebook pixel. Now you can create a remarketing audience to follow them around the internet, anywhere, Facebook, Instagram, CNN, Fox News, ESPN, uh, because you have those two pixels, you can follow them around. And we're gonna go deeper into that uh, with a step-by-step -step and show you how to do that. But that's an awesome question. And actually you're the first person to ask that. I've been, I've been talking about that. But that's actually something that we'll, we'll have coming up. So let's see, we got about six minutes left. So let's dive into um, ad copy. What are your thoughts on ad copy? Uh, so ad copy, what I like to do before I write anything, I like to research all of the community groups, message boards, and just read about um, what people are talking about in the neighborhood. And I think that's really important because what it does, it, it just puts you in the, uh, in the shoes of your target customer or, or the, pe the community of uh, the, the community that you're looking to market. And it just envelops you in, envelops you in, in the whole, um, and the whole experience. And so once you are able to really put yourself in their shoes and uh, engage in that experience, it puts you in a better place to actually write ad copy that you know would be appealing to your target client. And so uh, that at a high level is the approach that I take to ad copy. It's, it's, it's very important to be able to empathize with your target client. Yep, and I'm gonna tie into that because one thing I would say is whoever your ideal client is, if, you, if you're a new agent, you'll probably have to talk to a veteran agent, but if you're an agent that has closed several transactions, go back to all those folks that you closed um, and talk to them and say, hey, 
How was the experience? You know, what were your fears? What were you afraid of? Get to know them. And I'll give you a perfect example with me. I speak to dozens of real estate agents weekly. I take, matter of fact, here's some notes that I took. Every call I have, two or three pages of notes. I take the notes, I'm listening to what they're saying to see if they're a good fit because I don't let everyone in the program, but I've got hundreds of these notes from folks that did join the program or weren't a good fit regardless that I go through every probably quarter and I literally just dive into, because these are my ideal clients. I dive into the pain points, what were the challenges they were having, et cetera, and then that's what I use to extract new ad copy. Something else I highly recommend, and you tell me your thoughts on this, I'll bring it from a real estate perspective, use videos. Whether it's you on video, or whether it's a walkthrough video, because most real estate agents, number one, they're afraid of doing video. Two, they think it's more difficult than they need to. All you need is this right here. And a good mic, that's all you need. Use video because Facebook favors video. With video, anybody that watches your video for say 25% of the video or 50%, you can then do what Obi was talking about earlier. You can remarket to them. But video is huge. And you can also, if you're on camera, I can speak to you on video. Like some of you have seen my videos and are seeing your own videos now on Facebook and Instagram. I'm talking directly to you. I'm asking you questions. I'm saying, hey, does this message resonate with you? If it does, then you give me your name, email, and phone number, and we get on a call and we talk, or you watch the training. So that is something that you can do. Uh, how have you, how have you uh, what other tips do you have for, for around ad copy? Um, so one of the things that I like to do just to, struct, to add some structure to it is I take, um, I build out a grid. And so at the top of the grid, it would say their present state and their future state after they moved in to the, to, to the property. And then um, for each particular row, I will list the, the, current, the features, present state, and then and the future state of where, um, what I'm marketing. I will list the status, you know, because status is something that's, that's keen to people. They, a lot of people want to raise their status. So you want to consider, you know, how will their status be uh, raised as a result of the, the the property that you're uh, marketing, um, how would their day-to-day -day change? And that's something to consider. You, you know, is it, it the, 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 one of the listings that I was, uh, new developments I was marketing was uh, by a lake. And <laughs> in the ad copy I wrote, imagine waking up to the sounds of bird chirping um, and sounds by by a lick it, uh, something to that effect it, it, it i wrote it much better than i'm actually saying it <laughs> yeah and that's the day to day and so i added that into the ad copy and then you also want to include the emotion what's the current the the current state that you think they're in and then what would be the future state that they would be in as a result of moving in. And so once you fill all those things out, if you combine the features, status, day-to-day, -day, and the emotion, you should be able to come up with something pretty special in terms of ad copy. Um, those are, that's something that I, I found to be really effective and um, learned it from a, a really great copywriter. Yeah, and so basically, if you really want to see successful Facebook ads, you got to do the homework. It's not, you know, buy a Facebook course that somebody said and do every other. I've had agents tell me this specifically. I bought this course on Facebook. I went through it. I did it. And now I'm seeing every other agent in my area has the same ads. Duh. You got to be creative. You have to, you have to dive in. And you have to be creative. With it. Um, oh, and also, if anybody saw the email that I sent out, if you Google Facebook ads library, it'll show you anybody running Facebook ads and you can use that for inspiration. Don't do what I just said and copy and paste exactly, but that'll give you some inspiration. You can get some statistics on some of the ads and see which ones are doing better than others, but keep a swipe file. A swipe file in, in, in high school or college used to be called cheating, but it's like an open book test. Any ads you see, screen grab them, stick them in a, a Word document, 
for inspiration later. That's what you should do so you can see what other people are doing. And I'd say the best thing you can do with that is go outside of real estate, see what other people are doing, and then bring that into real estate because now you know nobody else is doing it. And you're zigging when they're zagging. I do that um, all the time. I'm spying on everybody all the time. Yeah. So, all right, we are at 731. I know you got to go, Opie, but tell everybody how they can get a hold of you. I know you've got an ads agency. If you want to kind of give them your URL, I don't know if you're accepting uh, consultations or clients, but just tell them a little bit of how they can get a hold of you. And then we'll go ahead and get off here and you can get back to what you got to do. So if you want to reach me, you can email me and that's at OB at accelerated growth digital.com. So that's spelled O B I at accelerated growth digital. .com. So uh, that's the easiest way to reach me. I'm pretty fast to respond. Um, if I, don't respond immediately. It's usually within 24 hours. Awesome. All right, everybody. And I am Damon Green with the Iconic Agent, uh, the new construction marketing mastery training with some quick Facebook tips just to provide some value uh, from, like I said, Facebook ads expert. And if you have any more comments, you can leave them on this page. I will go ahead and get to those as I can. And hopefully, Obi, we can get you back on sometime soon and uh, even dive deeper. We only had 15 you know, 30 minutes to really get in, but uh, I think this is really valuable. It looks like folks were appreciating the uh, conversation too. So cool, appreciate cool. it. And uh, all right, everybody, we will uh, sign off now. And uh, let me see here. Okay, yeah, we'll sign off now. And thanks for joining.